Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna be taking our citrus trees indoors for the winter time. Uh, because we live in such a cold climate here in Pennsylvania, it's quite difficult to grow citrus, um, but if you can bring them inside and give them the right environment, it's a piece of cake. And I wanna give you guys a couple steps today um, as to some of the things I think you guys should be doing. We're gonna talk about feeding them and giving them a horticultural oil, some kind of insecticide, talking about what to expect in the indoor environment, what your indoor environment should really look like. Um, we had, today's October 19th and this morning was our first frost warning. So I had actually brought them away from the frost um, into the sunroom over here where they were protected from that frost. You know, they're evergreen trees. They're very frost sensitive, although maybe a light frost wouldn't do a whole lot of harm to them. You know, some of these can be more frost sensitive than others, but uh, as a general rule, I don't think you really want to let them get hit with any frost. Um, you really want them to be as healthy as possible going into the winter time because the winter time can be a bit tricky. And one of the bigger pitfalls that people struggle with is root rot. Um, citrus trees have very sensitive roots to too much water. They'll rot very easily. They're also very fibrous roots. So uh, if you're killing a lot of the roots, your tree is going to defoliate. Um, it can also defoliate, by the way, if you're not watering it enough. So it's kind of hard to say, and you really should check the soil and be really paying attention to your citrus trees throughout the winter time. If you have them in the right condition, and, and I recommend the right condition is really somewhere warm, like the warmer spots in your, ho your house, uh, the sunnier windows that you have, the, the south-facing, west-facing west windows, somewhere where the the, the temperatures are above 70 because if the, the root zones of these plants are not kept above 70, they really don't do a whole lot in the wintertime. You know, they're subtropical trees and most subtropical trees require higher root zone temperatures. You know, house plants are pretty well adapted to that. They can even do pretty decently at like 60 degrees, you know, but let's take our, our pears and our apples and our stone fruits as an example that I have around the yard they'll almost grow roots all winter time uh, because they're well adapted to the colder soil temperatures and they can still grow when the the soil temperatures is like you know 50 degrees 40 degrees so um, these citrus trees just won't have the same effect they won't do anything they'll kind of sit there in limbo and if they're sitting there in limbo and not really actively metabolically doing something you're going to have issues with potentially having rot um, so you really want to make sure that the soil you start out with, this is really key, is very well draining. You almost want to create your own mix because a lot of the potting mixes that are available are just not well draining enough. Um, additionally, you really shouldn't put them in large pots. You really should take your time. Um, I got these trees, some of these that I'm going to show you guys. I have one behind me over here, which is actually, I think, been with me for about four winters now. And it's been through tons of battles and tons of learning to get this whole process correct. And I can honestly say that um, one of the bigger lessons is that you don't want to have them in too big of a pot too soon. You know, when you get these trees, a lot of the time, they're going to be in like quart sized pots or, or one gallon sized pots or two gallon sized pots. These are 10 gallon that I have them in and you don't really want to up them to something that's too wide you know, that has too much wet soil surrounding them. That's only going to really contribute to that root rot. You know, the, the pot that I got these guys from, this is a Fukushu kumquat. And I got this from Four Winds Growers. It's a great source, by the way, in California. They'll ship all over the U.S. Um, I got this pot in a quart size pot, which is, I think, about five inches wide. And you can actually see the roots because I have the, the pot situated in its new pot a bit higher than it was in the prior, um, just so that it has better drainage this way. And to be honest with you, um, it's in too big of a pot. You know, this is a 10 gallon size pot. You guys can't really see this all that well, but maybe I'll lift one up for you guys. You know, this is the, the pot that I'm talking about. And look at the size of this tree. You know, it's, uh, this particular one here is covered in limes because it's it's young and it's precocious that way but f as an example you know this is just not something you want to do you know you don't want to go from a five inch wide pot to a 14 inch wide pot it just 
you're kind of asking for trouble. Personally, if I'm really careful and I watch this and I know that my soil is well draining enough, I'll be all right. But um, you know, for someone that's new, beginner to this, it's not something you want to do. Um, the next thing we want to want to do is feed them. And I have a, a bunch of fertilizer here. I have some slow release fertilizer that I like to use. It's really, you can use anything. I think Osmocote's pretty good. I think a liquid fertilizer is probably the best. But if I put on enough enough of this slow release here, I'm not going to have to really worry about feeding them all winter time. This will feed them when I water. You know, this this automatically does it for me. Um, and I think a, a really a large amount of fertilizer is probably recommended. You know, I'm giving them three handfuls of of this. You know, this is a lot. Um, this is probably if I had a guess for a 10 gallon size tree, I'm going to give it about a cup of fertilizer and it's different depending on the fertilizer that you guys have. This is a, an NPK of 18, 5, 12. This will also give it some nice micronutrients. What I would suggest is giving it something like, you know, green sand, rock dust, or, you know, ironite really cover the the micronutrients because sometimes these trees can get very chlorotic and a lot of these trees here actually look great and i haven't fed them all that much this year i did about four feedings in may and that was it um, and they look great they're putting out new growth uh, this one here has got about six or seven limes on it for such a young tree i think that's pretty impressive honestly it should just keep growing uh, but i wanted some limes this year you know uh, there is some spots down on here where the tree, when I had just received it, that's where it looks like it was struggling a bit. So feeding it when you first get these things, a great idea, especially from a nursery where they're not really caring for these things too much. So we're just gonna throw on um, some slow release and that's gonna really help micronutrients again, really a big benefit. The next thing we're gonna do is actually pay attention to the form. Because if I have them in a, in a west window or a south facing window, I have them enough, in enough heat, they're gonna grow actually three or four spurts throughout the winter time. And I wanna prepare them for that. I'm gonna give them a haircut now and I'm gonna give them a haircut when they come out here again um, in the spring, in May. So what I'm looking at in this particular tree here is it's, gonna, it's putting out new growth on this particular branch right here. I don't wanna sort of mess with the new growth this branch is really well branched and that's kind of what I want. I want to have many, a lot of branches going on here. So what I want to do is really take off the tips of some of these branches. I like, I sort of like the length of this. It's not bad, you know, but I'm going to come in here and just simply take off this growth tip. And what that's going to do is encourage on the next flushes of growth for this to really branch out well. You know, you don't want your, your citrus trees too lanky. You don't want really long arms. You want to have shorter arms and more branching, a denser canopy. Um, and they're going to be really easy. It's going to be easier for them to hold a lot of fruit that way. So I'm just coming in here, kind of just taking off these growth tips. I mean, that was really only two buds I took off, two leaves. Um, and that's sort of it. I think I'm going to leave it right at that because this tree is pretty well. Actually, there's a branch down here that's kind of getting away from itself. So maybe I'll come back a little bit harder with this branch. Uh, watch your, you know, watch the thorns guys on some of these. They can be pretty bad, wear gloves. If I come over here, this is a really good example. Maybe I'll move you guys because I'm not sure if you can see this all that well. The tree right there in the center, we're gonna do that one right now. And this is a tree that again, has been through a number of winters with me. And it really is branching out nicely. I like the way it looks. Unfortunately, um, this tree just refuses to fruit. Um, it's a tangerine I got from Stark Brothers Nursery. Really don't recommend this variety. In fact, what I had was aiming to do in the beginning of the spring, because it didn't flower, um, was to actually graft onto it. I was gonna graft some kumquats. We'll talk about varieties in a minute. But I, I really value the kumquat for a number of reasons. Uh, as well as the, the more sour citrus. It's a lot easier to grow sour citrus here in this climate. So what I'm gonna do is, again, I've actually done this, believe it or not. I did this maybe about a month ago. 
And I came in here and I took off the tips. I brought the height down on some of these branches. But I'm gonna come across here on all the branches and I'm gonna, I took off the tip off this one and you can see that's why it's so, it's branching out so well. Just taking off the tips. This is removing that apical dominance, that, that auxin at the top of the plant. I took off the tip off that one. We're gonna take the tip off of here. This one's missing the tip. So I'm just really trying to think ahead for these trees in the winter time. And I'm really expecting, like I said, three or four flushes of growth. And if I get three or four flushes of growth off of this, let's say this branch right here, it's gonna just grow straight up in the air. It may actually be, it may actually get like another two and a half foot of growth, you know, just in this particular area. I'd rather have it branch out, you know, and save myself some growth and time. And then that way, hopefully next year it can flower for me. And, uh, I'll, you know, I'll actually get some fruit off of this damn thing. Um, so that's, that's kind of the basics there, guys. I'm gonna, that's all I'm gonna show you on that. Again, we're just trying to keep everything less lanky. There's a branch down here on the uh, Australian finger lime that we can really head back this one pretty well. And that's what I'll do. I'm gonna take off pretty significant amount of growth there. So it really depends on what your, um, you know, what your tree looks like. But as a general rule, I think it's a great idea to keep them shorter and bushier um, than more lanky. Uh, the next step we're going to take is we're going to come in here with actually um, our sprayer and we're going to give these trees a horticultural oil. There's also, believe it or not, um, I have some fertilizer in here. I have a foliar spray. Um, it's called Dynagrow Protect. It's a, silicon, uh, uh, it's a silica supplement and it really helps with disease resistance and um, hardiness and, and just really the all, overall general health of the of the tree the natural resistance is maybe it might help with some pest resistance we'll see but that's one of the big issues here and why i'm doing this is that when you have these citrus trees in a very cold environment in, in a dry environment inside they're very subject to spider mites and pests um, spider mites is probably the biggest one you're gonna have to deal with i've seen some scale in the past but the spider mites can really suck out all that energy out of your tree and you may not even notice it's happening um, because it's the winter time, you're not really paying attention. So it's a good idea, I personally think, to spray all these trees now. Give them a good soak down that's maybe gonna kill any pests that are currently on this. So that when, it, when I bring it inside, um, it's gonna have a nice fresh start. And if there are spider mites, it's probably gonna be a lot less in number throughout the winter time. Um, they seem to pretty much go away if you can give them a nice little spray of water of, of any kind. Um, you know, they really don't like the more humid environments. So uh, I think that's a really big tip. And we're just gonna come in here again and get this all watered down here, sprayed down. Underside the leaves, or under undersides of the leaves, I'm sorry guys. Actually, I don't like that branch down there. I just noticed that. We're gonna probably cut that out. You should also cut out any diseased or dead wood that you may see. You know, really try to improve the health of this damn thing. Keep it healthy, keep it vigorous. You know, if I'm looking at this a little bit closer here, and I'll do this when I stop the video, there's a, maybe a branch right in here that I don't really like. Um, a very small branch, I should say. There's also some sort of, looks like some wood down here that maybe we clipped off earlier and this, we can just clear that out of there. Um, just look for anything that doesn't look so great. Usually down towards the bottom of the tree. And uh, something I didn't mention, I totally forgot, is that we need to get all the weeds out of here. You can't really see this, but there's a lot of weeds in this pot. This is definitely not something you want. You don't want weeds competing with your fruit trees and pots. They already have limited nutrients as it is. Um, so I'm just gonna clear all this out of here. And then the last thing I wanna talk to you guys about is the varieties. And, and if you're growing citrus in, in cooler climates without the help of a greenhouse, 
you kind of really want to limit yourself to sour citrus. Um, you know, it's a bit more difficult. It's not like it's not possible, but for something like a tangerine that's more along the lines of like a, a Satsuma Mandarin, it's kind of what I'm expecting this to be, is that you basically want to uh, really give it the right attention, the right environment for it to really sweeten up. Um, otherwise, it's not. And uh, you're going to have issues with this. Uh, so it's, I think it's best, in my mind, to just stick with you know, sour citrus, like the Australian finger lime I have behind me here, which is quite young. I have a, a lime tree here. Lemon trees are great. And then this is a kumquat. And the kumquat I find to be very interesting because it's really like, it's a very tasty fruit. You have to eat the skin with it, not just the, the pulp. But it's like the first fruit of my year if I do everything right. Um, this will actually fruit for me in the beginning of May, maybe the end of April. Whereas I have no other fruit at that time in the yard. I have strawberries, which will fruit for me at the end of May. Um, so this is pretty much beating everything as a really nice, healthy piece of fruit. When everybody's craving homegrown fruit, this is like the first of the year. I think for that, it's really hard to beat. And I've actually been trying to graft the kumquat onto this particular tangerine that uh, just for whatever reason isn't fruiting for me. Um, I also really value guys, for those of you who haven't really maybe dabbled enough in the kitchen, um, limes and lemons are just incredible in the kitchen for adding acidity to your food. Uh, that was a big thing for me, a big selling point. I originally wanted really sweet citrus. Like I got some blood oranges, I got some cara cara navel oranges, I got some satsuma mandarins, just some really interesting pieces of citrus that are sweet. And I thought that'd be great, but um, knowing what I know now about cooking, it's really difficult and it's important to have citrus in your cooking. It's really something, it's a gift. And I don't think people really realize that. A lot of people who don't understand enough about cooking don't get that. And I think, yeah, you may not understand that for a while. Even if you had a lemon tree, you may not really fully understand it. But as long as you have a lemon, you can then use a lemon in the kitchen. You know, you can't really uh, experiment with it. Like a lot of my herbs I grow, you know, what do you do with thyme, right? I mean, there's so many herbs <laughs> that you just sit there and you're like, what do I do with this? But um, if you learn enough and you get more, enough experience in the kitchen and you have it available, you can then start to use it and start incorporating it into your cooking. So it's the same thing with citrus. And I, I really recommend that a lot of you guys Forget about the sweeter varieties if you're in the, you know, the colder parts of the world. Stick with something that's sour and you're gonna be a lot more happy. Um, and again, again, the kumquats, wonderful. And also the leaves, you can use the leaves in cooking. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna comment with different things, you know, go ahead, comment down below. Whatever you guys use your citrus for in the kitchen, let me know down in the comments. I hope everybody enjoyed this one and learned something here. It's really all about feeding these things quite heavily. They're heavy feeders, giving them the right amount of water and giving them the right temperature throughout the winter time. Um, I think I may have mentioned this, but yeah, you can put them in the basement 